Because using this calculator correctly is so crucial to being able to get these finance problems correct in uh, our work, I wanted to take some time to talk simply about some of the issues that might come up when you're using the calculator. So here's some of the major ones. Um, you have to be able to deal with these. First is entering a negative number. This calculator, and I guess most, will not let you enter a negative number directly. So for instance, if you had a calculation and you were trying to, to calculate this quantity, you would start off by adding 1 and 0 0.03. 1 plus 0 0.03 equals. Now you need to raise it to a power. Well, there's no way to enter a negative 12 directly. There's a little uh, trick and it's easy. You hit the power, go ahead and hit the power button because you know you're going to raise a power, but then you enter the positive counterpart of that number. So you want to enter negative 12, but instead you just enter 12. There's a key on the calculator labeled plus minus. It's right above the 7. And if you press that, that will change the sign to the opposite. So you enter a positive number, it becomes negative. So now you have your negative exponent. You've already put the power, done the power button and put the negative in, so all you have to do now is to hit equal. And so you have your answer, 0 0.7013798. Now, I'm going to say this here just because I say it every time I work one of these problems. In the, in the finance problems we're working with, lots of times we're dealing with really big numbers and they require you to carry lots of decimal places. So if you're going to leave your number in the display, it doesn't really matter. But if you do end up writing a fraction, a decimal down, that you're going to put back in later, chances are you need to carry a lot more decimal places than you need. But my suggestion always is just to leave the number in the display of the calculator and then you don't have to deal with that issue. Okay, that's the first thing. Number two, you need to be able to deal with how the calculator displays a number in scientific notation. And an example of that is you might see something like this, five point, and then you've got in the exponent negative 03. You might see that. What does it mean? Well, it's the calculator's way of, of showing something in basically in scientific notation. And where you might see that, I thought it would be nice just to sort of work an example where you might actually see that show up and then show you how to deal with it through that example. It says Sue invests $100 in an account paying 6% compounded monthly. How much will be in the account in 10 years? Now this is just a plain old um, compound interest problem. So you would be using this formula a is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus I raised to the nth power. A is the future value or what I sometimes call the accumulated value and that's what they're asking for. So in this problem we're searching for A. Now, It's also true that P is the principal. That's the amount that you are investing so that would be a hundred dollars here. And I guess we can just do all of these. The time in years is 10 years. M is the number of compounding periods per year, and we're compounding it um, monthly. So M would be 12. And actually, I didn't put a line for little r, but I can go ahead and add that. R, little r is the annual interest rate. And that's given here as 6%, which we write as a decimal, will be 0 0.06. So as you know, the formula itself has little i which is r over m in it so we have to figure out what r over m is. So r of course is 0 0.06 and m is equal to 12. Now watch what happens
when I do this calculation. I put in 0 0.06 divided by 12 equals, and the calculator comes up with that same quantity that I pointed out earlier. It's 5 decimal point and then an exponent of minus 03. So you will see that on some of these calculations on this calculator. So let me get rid of this and just talk about, at least for now, what that actually means. As I said, it's the calculator's way of showing something in scientific notation. And what it means is this. The decimal place is currently showing there. The negative sign in the exponent says the decimal place is eventually going to move to the left, and the number here tells me how many times to the left. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that decimal point, which is sitting here, and you're going to move it to the left because that's negative. If it were positive, it'd be to the right, but it's negative. Three spaces, three uh, places. So you go one, two, that means you got to add a zero, three, add another zero. So, that quantity, just so you can see it a little better because of all my writing here, is 0 0.005. If you put it three places to the right, one, two, three, it's right back where it started from. So this negative sign means to the left, the three means three places to the left, and then this is where the decimal place started, so that's where you start moving it, one, two, three. That's all it means, but you need to know that or you're, um, you could be in trouble or it could just startle you. Now I'll show you something else. For this particular problem, you really don't have to even know what it means if it doesn't panic you. Sometimes you might. But in this particular problem, if I took 0 .006 divided by 12 and put it in, I get that. I could just not even recognize what it means and still get the right answer. I'd prefer you not do that, but you could because really what I'm going to do with that is take that quantity and add one to it. So even if I even if I didn't know what that number meant in the calculator, which I hope you do, if I just went ahead and said plus one equals I got the answer. I got the the point zero zero five with one added to it without really even knowing what that quantity meant. Like I said, I would like for you to know what that means, but in the interest of getting the problem right or wrong, you could actually get it correct without even making this intermediate step of translating it. So you would end up with, if you actually, since we're so close, we'll go ahead and solve it. Uh, 1.005 to the 120th power. Why is it 120? Because m is 12 and t is 10 and 10 times 12 is 120. So now that I've got that number in the base, I can raise it to the 120th power to the power of 120 equals. And then if I take that quantity and multiply it by 100, I get the final result. The accumulated value or the future value would be $181.94 to the nearest cent. Okay, so that's how you deal with that. And the third thing I want to go ahead and point out is how to use the reciprocal key. You don't ever have to do it that way, but as I hope that I'll be able to show you, there are some times when there's an advantage of being able to use it. It makes it a little bit easier. Here's a particular example. In some of our calculations, especially when we're doing present value of an annuity in section 5.3, we'll get to the point we'll, where we'll have an equation that might look something like this. It might say 1,000 equals capital R times this decimal value. Now, we all know what that really means. To solve for R, I have to divide both sides by this 4.711232456689. So what, I, what I'm really trying to do is, is this. The problem is, are the the um, 
the reason I'm pointing this out is that any time this would come up in a context that we're using it, what you'll find out is that this number to the right of the R is already sitting in the display of the calculator. It's not as if you're typing it in from nowhere. This number pops up as a result of a previous calculation. So here's the situation. And that's really all the decimal places I can uh, plug in to this calculator, but that's enough for what we're doing. The point is, this number, I was calculating, 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 and I came up with this number, and now I'm to the situation where I need to say 1,000 divided by that number. There are three ways at this point to deal with it. The way I would not deal with it is just clear the display, type in a thousand, hit divided by, and type it back in, and hit equal. That would work, but be sure you take plenty of decimal places. But that's a lot of extra work. It, it leads to the possibility of not taking enough decimal places and getting a rounding error. It also leads to the possibility of making a typo and missing it. So I would not recommend that, although it would work. Second way would be to take the number in the display and use the memory uh, function of the calculator to uh, store the number and then bring it back when you need it. Nothing wrong with that. If you want to learn how to do it that way, that's fine. The third way is the way I would recommend, and that's to use this reciprocal key. The reciprocal key essentially flips a fraction upside down. So if I wanted to say 1,000 divided by this, 4.7 and on and on, I could do the division backwards. I can, instead of saying a thousand divided by this, in other words, instead of saying the numerator divided by the denominator, denominator, I could say the denominator divided by the numerator. However, I know that's not what I'm looking for, but it's the reciprocal of what I'm looking for. So if I take the denominator, which is this number, and divide it by the numerator, which is 1,000, that's not what I want, but it's the reciprocal of what I want. So if I hit equal, that is not what I want. And you can see that little negative 03 popped up again. That means the decimal place is really three places further to the, to the left. But nevertheless, that's not the number I wanted because I divided denominator by numerator instead of numerator by denominator. But I can fix that very easily by hitting the reciprocal button. Now, if you can see this, the reciprocal key, the 1 over x, is sitting uh, as the shift key for the key just to the left of the power button. So there it is right there. So if I do shift reciprocal, then all of a sudden I get the answer I was actually looking for. So capital R to the nearest cent would be $212.26. The point being here, you never have to do it this way. You never have to use a reciprocal key. But if you ever get in a situation where you're doing a division and you've got the number multiplied by r, whatever the variable is, and it's got a lot of decimal places uh, in your display already, you can divide it denominator by numerator instead of numerator and denominator and then hit the reciprocal key and it will give you exactly what you needed. It just, it's just a fast way to do it. It minimizes the chance of error. I would practice doing it a bunch of times and um, see how it works.